What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Bookmine Academy. This is going to be a quite long series where Victor and I are going to talk about the foundations, the things that you need to know about Keepa. And I think the first thing that we should start with, Victor, is what the heck is Keepa? Where can we find Keepa? Where can we download it? Do we have to pay for it? Is it free? All that kind of stuff. So, Victor, what's going on, man? How's it going, Joji? Yeah, uh, we just wanted to put a lot of resources together, and this is the first video of many videos. And uh, I think it's a great way to kick off this whole thing of basically how to sign up for Keepa. What is Keepa and uh, you know, what are all these lines? So yeah, let's dig into it. All right, so we're gonna head on over to Bookmine and let's go. All right, Victor, we're over here on the Bookmine app. Can you just kind of point out uh, where's Keepa on Bookmine? So Keepa is front and center on, on Bookmine because it's so important in sourcing books. And it's over here on the left-hand side, it says Keepa Graph. And it basically it's a snapshot of the book's history, the last six months. And so if, if you are new to uh, sourcing books online, this is new to you, but basically this is really important. We're gonna show you how, what it is and how to get it. So for any particular book on Bookmine, you'll see that there's a, a Keepa link, which just means that we're going to look at this particular book within the Keepa software. Keepa is just going to allow us to see so, 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 so many data points about a book. It's going to help us make an informed decision. I like to tell people that the first thing that Keepa is going to allow you to do is prevent you from making bad decisions, or then it's going to allow you to make good decisions. So in other words, it's going to save you so much money by preventing you from buying all these bad books, and then also make you a lot of money because it, it will you know, make you more confident and will allow you to see trends that are profitable and, and stuff like that. This is what the Keepa graph looks like. You know, don't worry, in the Bookmine Academy, as you watch the other videos, we'll break down all this stuff. I know it looks super overwhelming to you. Well, let's just start with this actual, you know, Keepa graph here. Like, how would you even be able to see this Keepa graph? So, I mean, as a, basically, somebody just coming in, they wouldn't actually be able to see these green lines at all. They would actually just see the use line and and I think maybe the Amazon line, and that's really it. And uh, it, it'll look totally different for you than uh, somebody who's actually a subscribed member. So that's why it's important to, you know, to kind of subscribe to keep up. Right. So kind of what Victor is talking about is this sales rank later on, like the next video in the series, we'll talk about the importance of sales rank. Just, just really quickly, it's it'll let us know how frequently and how often a book is selling, which is very, very important. And in order for you to see that sales rank, it's actually behind a paywall. That means that you actually have to pay Keepa a monthly subscription in order to see sales rank. But Victor, would you say that being able to look at a book's historical selling data over its entire lifetime, is that worth the subscription cost of about like $20 a month? Oh yeah, it's worth its weight in gold. You have to have it to source books correctly on Amazon. I mean, we're spending a couple of thousand dollars and you know, Keepa is 20 bucks. So definitely it's something well worth it. Yeah, absolutely. So the way that you would be able to see this green line, because again, if you just kind of went to Keepa and you're just looking at a book or let's say, you know, you're a subscriber of Bookline and you're not actually able to see these green lines like you, you see here. Well, when you go into Keepa, you're not going to be able to see the green lines. So you're going to have to subscribe to it. So the way that you would subscribe is first, you'd have to come up here and make an account. And so I'll just go and log out, you know, for sakes here. But you would go ahead and click the login button and, you know, you'd go ahead and basically register. Then you would log in. And now once you're logged in again, you're still not going to be able to see any sales rank. So like here's a great example of what you would probably see. See the blue line. That's right. Black line, right? But you don't see any sales rank, which is, again, going to be the biggest value add and the most important piece of Keepa. And, you know, that's why it's behind a paywall is because they know it's the most important feature. So what you're going to then do is come up here to the subscriptions. You get your username, go down to subscriptions. And then what are you going to see here, Victor? So you're going to see your account and then you'll be able to change a lot of different features. You'll be able to customize your own account. And so that's what you kind of want to check on. Um, it also will let you know when you subscribed, when the next time you're, you're going to like, uh, pay again and what type of access you have. Right, absolutely. So right now you can see this is 189 euros per year. I think it comes out to right around 20 bucks per month. You can pay on a monthly basis. You can pay on a yearly basis. If you pay on a yearly basis, it's a little bit cheaper. I'm a bookseller. I'm serious about this. I know I need it. It's like the most important thing is to be able to see if a book is actually selling. Victor, do we want to be buying books if they're not selling? I mean, no, definitely not. That's why we're selling books. We want to be booksellers, not book collectors. Yeah, exactly. So you can go and work out your own subscription there. You know, go ahead and try it out uh, one month, pay for one month, and you'll see that the value that it adds. 
Now, what's something that you would also want to have, Victor? Like, let's say you wanted to look at this book on the Amazon listing, and let's say, you know, you're watching the book mine videos, you're watching Joji and Victor's videos, and you're like, wow, how do they get this keep a graph? Let's see, how, how would that actually be embedded here? Yeah, I mean, good question. I, I remember a lot of people ask me that, like, how are you able to get that on the Amazon page? That's pretty awesome that it just pops up there on the side. Right. And basically what you're having to do is download a Chrome extension on Keepa, basically. And once you download that Chrome extension, it'll automatically pop up every time you go to an Amazon page. It'll quickly populate itself after every page. And I think it's a great ad. So once you get Keepa, go in and download that Chrome extension. It's free after you after you paid for your uh, subscription. Absolutely. Or you just go to Google, type in the Chrome Web Store. Once in there, you can literally just type in Keepa and you're going to see that it's going to come up here. You can see as 4.8 rate, you know, 4.8 rating with 5,000 views just because it's it's in an insane, right? It's 4 million users. I mean, it's, it's an insane tool and you're going to absolutely need it. So there's going to be a button up here that says add to Chrome. And once you go ahead and add it to Chrome, then all of a sudden when you load any Amazon web page, it's going to actually pop up down here and that's going to be, you know, an awesome value add. Now, last thing I think we should talk about are some of the important settings. So again, once you're on Keepa, like let's say, you know, you're on BookMine, you go and open up a book, you're like, hey, let's take a look at this book. You know, there might be specific features here that, that you're going to want to be able to see. You know, for an example, like you might want your default view, Victor, to be three months or a year. You know, it, it depends on you. Another one would be how long you want to track the book for. Some people want right. to track the book for six months, a year, two years, 10 years. Right. So all that's in the settings. Yeah. So if I'm, if I'm going to track this product, again, we'll talk about that later on. You can see that. I've defaulted to 10 years, but you could default it to any any time here. So essentially the way that you would do this is, again, once you click on a, a keep link from BookMine, you can come up here to the top right under your profile. You can go over to settings and then you can come all the way over to the website cog in the far right. And this is where you can go ahead and, and set your defaults for everything as far as chart appearance, tracking settings, add-on settings, and so on. What on here, Victor, would you say, just taking a, a brief glimpse, are things that you think people should change automatically? Yeah, I mean, quickly, the uh, one year here on a keeper graph, that's probably I definitely want to want to see. Right here, I also right. want, so yeah, right, exactly. One year. I think if the default is three months, I would definitely agree with Victor. Go to a year, okay? Yeah, I mean, a lot of times if you're wanting, I know if you guys are, mostly you guys are new, but also the tracking mode there of advanced, that's pretty cool because then you can, can right. get the um, the good, uh, very good prices of books and stuff like that. So that pops up. I also track books for 10 years because, I mean, I'm, I know I'm going to be a bookseller for, for quite a long time. So okay. the longest period I can. Sure, let's track that. You know, and, and then basically the rest of it, I'm I'm looking just to make sure that it's correct. Like they keep a box, that's cool. I mean, the rest of it's kind of defaulted that way. I think yep. the rest I kind of keep that way. Yeah. The, so the only thing that I think may not be defaulted yeah. um, would be this display stuff yeah, on point. an offer listing page. I think it's actually no. You want that to be defaulted, yes. And so all that simply means is when you're on an Amazon web page, you know, and you're looking at the 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 offer count, you're looking at other sellers on the listing trying to sell that book to a customer. You, you kind of want to know how many offers they have in stock, like how many, um, not offers, but how many copies of that book they have in stock. So you can see there's a little stock button here that says one, revealed by Keepa. You can see it says one, revealed by Keepa. That's only going to show if you have that thing checked off here. So let me go back to it. So if you have this as yes, you'll go ahead and see that number. And why would that be important, Victor? Why would you want to know if there's two or 50 or 20 or seven or one? <laughs> well, we'll get into it more, but basically if a seller has a ton of copies of that book, it's... It's definitely a yellow flag when you're over the, when you're uh, sourcing right. for books. You want to see that. If you do see that, a lot of times I tend to like pass on those type of books. Yeah. So Canvas Bookstore, they've got two. Canvas Bookstore is a bigger seller. Say I have like 42. That's like whoa. Okay. And yeah. there's going to be a lot of competition on this book because they've got tons of copies that they need to move. They might really willing to tank the the price of this book if they need to. Right. Now the other thing I can say is you know show price history graphs overlays when hovering Amazon products. I default that to yes as well only because you know you might come across a book that has a new edition. And if you hover over the title of the product, you can see the keeper graph there. So it's a quick little value. Uh, would you agree that that's probably smart to, to include as well, Victor? Oh, definitely. I think that's awesome to include. So we hope you, you found this valuable. You know, basically 20 bucks a month. It will save you $20 a month by helping you not buy bad books, most importantly. And then it's going to make you a bunch of money by helping you make uh, smart decisions for the books that you should buy. Anything else you want to add, Victor? Oh, it's definitely the number one tool. I think that's the first thing up when you are a bookseller. So make sure you go in and get a keep a subscription. And uh, yeah, we got tons of videos after this one. So uh, happy you have joined us and, uh, you know, see you on the next one. Yeah, absolutely.
So um, just one quick game before we go. We're not sponsored by Keepa. We're not also making money off of uh, a oh. link that we give to Keepa. We're just saying that. That's like literally the thing that you need, Victor, right? So That's right. So yeah, we have no alternative motives. Like that's what you need to be a successful bookseller. Uh, otherwise, um, you know, if you're somebody who knows what eBay selling is like, pretend like you try to be an eBay seller and you had no access to eBay sold comps or even active listings. How would you know what the value of something is? You wouldn't, right? You just- right. It'd just be like literally like walking in the darkness without any sight of where you're going. So it's absolutely crucial. Hope this video is helpful and we'll see you guys on the next one.